G'day, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about 3D print failures. But those of you who follow my channel, in my last video, I made a portable Bluetooth speaker with a 3D printed case and had a lot of failures. Uh, so today, I wanna to talk to you about the failures I experienced, hopefully to help you identify them, resolve them, and enhance your 3D printing experience, making it a more enjoyable hobby. So, let's get started. Before we get started, I just want to do a massive shout out to a mentor of mine on YouTube, Peter McKinnon. I've been watching a lot of his videos lately. He's really helped me improve my video production game. Uh, simple little tips like lighting angle and color, um, camera angle, frame rate. Uh, so anyone who's into any sort of video production, cinematics, photography, wants to improve their video editing or their Photoshop game, go and check out his channel. Not that he really needs any extra support with his 4.3 million subscribers, but give credit where credit's due. I am really excited because the video production here has improved a lot. All I need to do now is improve my content quality. So on that going to jump straight into my top five 3D print failures that I've been experiencing lately. Uh, we're going to go through corrupt G-code files, bed leveling, clogged hot ends, clogged tips or nozzles, and filament jams. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump in. Number one, corrupt G-code files. Now, while this isn't very common and it shouldn't happen very often, when it does, it's extremely annoying. Uh, easiest way to identify this is if your 3D print has failed more than once in exactly the same place. If you've ever opened up a G-code file in something like Sublime or a Notepad++, you'll see it nicely laid out with X, Y, and Z, or E coordinates. It'll have the letter, it'll have what the number of the coordinate is, and it's basically telling your 3D printer where to be, when to be, and what to do in an exact location anywhere on the 3D bed. So, if you have random characters, say like at symbols, hashtags, question marks, boxes, anything that shouldn't be there, anything that isn't alphanumeric, it's probably an indication you have a corrupted G-code file. Now, G-code files can usually be thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of text, so you're probably not gonna wanna scroll through the whole thing and have a look. Generally speaking, if it fails more than once in the same place, just go back to your slicer, drop in the STL file, remake the G-code file, and drop it back onto your 3D printer and hope that it doesn't happen again. Number two. Print bed leveling. Now, while this seems straightforward, it's probably the most common reason for 3D print failures. The first piece of advice I received when I first got my 3D printer, make sure you level the bed. Now, for my printer, I've got a Creality CR10 V2. It is a massive print area. It's 300 by 300 by 400. Uh, so it is a pig to keep level. The number one tip I can give you for leveling your 3D printer is to make sure that you've got it at print temperature before you start making any adjustments. Obviously heat causes expansion, so if you've done it while it's cold, it's gonna be different once it's hot. For my printer, I go around each corner with a piece of paper between the nozzle and the bed and make slight adjustments on each corner until there's no more adjustments to be made. Then I go around once more just to make sure everything is all good. Now, what I didn't realize is you've actually got to do this periodically. The screws that make the adjustments can come loose from movement, or maybe you might've put a bit of excessive force on one of the corners of the print bed last time you removed a print job. Uh, so you can identify an unlevel bed by looking at your 3D prints. If the nozzle's starting to dig in on one corner and getting really thin, you need to level the bed. So you usually see it wearing thin on one corner and then where it moves away to an area that's not, uh, not as high as that side, it'll let a lot of 3D print filament out. So uh, it's pretty easy to identify. If you see it, stop your print job, clean the print bed and just go and level things and start again. Clogged hot end. This one is a pain. I hate this one. So this is basically when the 3D print job comes unstuck from the bed and manages to attach itself to the nozzle and the hot end. Uh, so if you've got an enclosed hot end like I do on the CR10 V2, uh, all your filament is just going to now start pouring out of the nozzle and forcing its way back up into the hot end and clogging that up. Uh, potentially it's then going to squeeze out into the fans and cause them to lock up as well. So uh, hopefully you've managed to catch this while you're at home. Hopefully it hasn't happened while you're asleep or potentially if you're at work, uh, hopefully you've got something like Octopi running or Spaghetti Detective so you can log on, you can check it and you can stop it remotely. Um, best way to resolve this one is you wanna either, number one, turn on your hot end to operating temperature and let it melt out there. Um, you can grab the mass while it's on there, while it's cold um, and drag that out. Um, definitely don't put your hands in there when it's hot it's 200 degrees you'll end up burning yourself and getting a massive blister 
Um, but you really want to make sure that you get all of it out. So you want to make sure it all drips right out. Otherwise, uh, if you uh, carry on printing, it's going to dribble out at some point. It might not happen straight away. It might be a few prints later. So in this case here, I've got uh, black stuck up inside the hot end. Thought I got it all out, changed my filament to a green color, printed, and yeah, all of a sudden there was drips coming out. The other way you can clean it out, number two, is to take apart the hot end. Uh, so if you've got your casing, remove the screws for it, pull it all apart, and make sure you get it all out. Be careful, don't go digging around with a screwdriver like I did the first time it happened to me. Up inside the hot end, you've got some very sensitive wires that go to the heating element inside the hot end. So uh, you may want to make sure you avoid digging around with a screwdriver in there, or if you do, you want to know your way around inside there first so that you don't hit the wrong spots in there and cause some major damage. Number four, clogged nozzle. Now, this is pretty simple to identify. Uh, basically, your print job might not start or it may stop halfway through. Um, easiest way to check this is just to take the tension off the extruder arm and try to manually force the filament through with your hand. If you don't see any coming out of the hot end, uh, then you've probably got a clogged nozzle. Now this also could be other problems, but the best thing to do is just start with your nozzle. If you haven't changed it recently, look, they're a consumable, they're cheap enough, you can buy packets of them for a few dollars. Just change the nozzle and uh, see if that fixes the problem. It may then lead on to number five, a filament jam. Now this is a bit of a pain. It's not something you put on your sandwich. It's not something you can eat. Uh, this can happen for one or two reasons. First one being uh, when they're putting the filament on the spool in the factory, um, instead of it going along in a nice neat little line, at some point it's crossed over and created a bit of a knot. Uh, so as your extruder is pulling the filament off of the reel, it's got jammed up. The knurled side of the roller has dug into the filament. Uh, it may come loose at some point and force itself through, but now you've got a flat spot. You've got an oblong shaped filament. Uh, that's going to go through your liner. It's probably going to jam up a little bit. The knurled roller is then going to dig in on another spot and the problem is just going to continue to snowball. Now, if this continues to happen, it's going to damage the inside of the liner and it's going to make the liner out of shape. Now, that's just going to snowball the problem even further because now you've got one problem that you can resolve and then you've got an oblong roller and that's going to cause another problem. Uh, so the second reason this can happen is because when they were making the uh, filament in the factory, during the extrusion process, they had a bit of a muck up and they've now got variations in the diameter along your, your spool of uh, filament. You won't see this with your naked eye, um, but your printer will definitely notice it. So if you've got a damaged liner, it's gonna happen uh, more often than not. If you've got a good liner, it's probably gonna be a bit more forgiving. The inside diameter of a liner is usually two mil and most filament is 1.75. So you've got a fair bit of wiggle room. Uh, but however, if there's some large variations in the diameter size of the uh, filament, or if you've already got a damaged liner, you can see that this is gonna cause some issues. Once again, the filament's gonna stop along the way, the roller's gonna dig in, it's gonna create flat spots and snowball the effect. So this is easily identified by your print job doing little bits of uh, filament along the print job, uh, but usually you'll see it has stopped along the way at some point and just continues on without printing. So uh, this is a bit of a pain. So once again, hopefully you're home when this happens, you can stop it. You can uh, remove the uh, filament from the liner, go and put some fresh filament through there. If it continues to happen, you're just gonna have to get rid of the spool. Um, I know I hate wasting, but look, if it's gonna continue to cause problems, you're also gonna waste your energy and your time as well as more filament. So uh, just go and cut that one away. That's my top five guys. Um, there's obviously a lot more reasons that you can have uh, print failures. Uh, so look, I'd definitely like to hear from you guys. Um, what problems do you guys experience and how you go overcome them? Um, how often does this happen? Throw your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure uh, you hit that like and subscribe button if you've got something out of this. Share the videos out there, share the love and uh, jump on my Thingiverse page, check out my latest projects. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.